When we saw the image of the reaction occurring, we saw these various states that you see on the screen. The enzyme plus the substrate bound together to make the ES complex, which converted upon the change in the enzyme to the ES star complex, which created the EP, or the enzyme product complex, which ultimately resulted in the release of the enzyme in the product. Now I come back to this because we are going to need to consider some things about the kinetic parameters, that is the, uh, the um, um, speed uh, parameters of the reactions that we're going to study. Now, this rate of formation of product is really what we're interested in. When we talk about how fast an enzyme can make a reaction occur, this is the guts of what we're after. We want to know how fast is the enzyme able to do this. Well, if to do this, we need to make some simple um, assumptions. And so we assume in the simple case that the enzyme substrate complex proceeds directly to enzyme plus product. Okay, so when it, we've simplified this more complicated equation above to a simpler uh, equation below, and this is done to help us better understand what's going on in the, pri in the overall mechanism. Now, these constants that are here won't really enter into our uh, consideration, but the k-cat that you see in the enzyme going to E plus P will in fact be an important consideration for us as we talk about the kinetic parameters. The k-cat, as we shall see, is the rate with which product is formed. Now, let's consider what's happening inside uh, of a couple of different scenarios of a reaction. We can imagine that we have enzymes, for example, shown in yellow, and we have substrates as little red colored balls that are there. We can have a situation, first of all, where we have a reaction going on in a condition of low substrate. And if we have a low amount of substrate in a solution, we can imagine that there's very few enzymes that are going to be bound to substrate because the chances of encountering a substrate are reduced. In the middle, of course, we have an intermediate state where we have a little bit higher concentration of substrate than we did before. And so we can see here that there are more enzyme molecules bound to and engaged in the process of making uh, the product. And the third scenario we could imagine is high substrate. And when we have a situation of high substrate, we notice here that every enzyme is bound to a substrate. And that's important because at high substrate concentrations, we have enzymes that are what we call saturated with substrate, meaning that once it has bound a substrate, made a product, and released it, almost instantaneously, it grabs another substrate. It's not sitting around and waiting for things. Now, so enzymes, interestingly, have some um, um, kinetic uh, considerations, which is, of course, what we're interested in studying here. But we see now, for the first time, a projection of the way that the enzyme is working. So I need to explain some things on the graph that you see. First of all, we're plotting on this graph a reaction. The reaction is plotting the velocity of the reaction on the y-axis versus the substrate concentration that's used in the reaction on the x-axis. Now you notice the V has a little zero beneath it, and the zero beneath it I'll explain later, but it's called the initial velocity for, uh, for our purposes. The velocity of a reaction is measured as the concentration of product made divided by time. The concentration of product made per time. Well, we measure concentration in molar, millimolar, micromolar, etc. So that would be some molarity per time. That is how velocity is measured. The substrate concentration varies because to generate a curve like this, I do not one reaction, but I do a series of reactions. So let me set that up. We can imagine, for example, that I'm setting up a series of 20 reactions, 20 different test tubes. I want to measure the velocity in each one of those test tubes. And what I do is I take into that test tube, I place the buffer that holds the uh, substrate, I place the substrate, and I place the enzyme. Now when I'm doing an experiment, I want to have one variable because one variable is the only thing I can really uh, manipulate and measure the effect of that. The variable I have here is substrate concentration. I use the same amount of enzyme in every tube. All 20 tubes have the same amount of enzyme. They all have the same amount of buffer, and they have varying amounts of substrate, starting from very small amounts to very high amounts. I take and I let each one react for an exact same time, and then I measure the amount of product. So by doing that, I can see the effect 
of measuring, of, of changing substrate on the velocity, and then I plot it. So what you see on the screen is the sum of those plots. That is, each, each point on that, on that dot came from a series of reactions that I did, and each one of those individual reactions had a specific substrate concentration and a specific velocity that was reached. Well, not surprising as we look at this, what do we see? Well, on the far left, we're at low substrate concentration. What's the velocity? It's very low. And that's what I showed on the, on the original uh, image. Low substrate concentration, enzyme is sitting there waiting for substrate, there's not going to be much velocity. When I get to a high substrate concentration, such as I see on the right side of the screen, I've got a high velocity. Makes sense. Okay, low substrate, low velocity, high substrate, high velocity. I want you to remember that. Now I'm showing another plot here to illustrate a principle uh, of a reaction. On the y-axis, I have the concentration of product. We could think of that again as velocity. But on the x-axis now, I'm plotting the time of a reaction. So I could take one of the tubes that I used in the previous one, and for example, look at how fast the product is being accumulated, and what happens to that product over time. Well, we can see on this plot that over the early range of the reaction, there's a linear relationship between the production of product and time. Okay? But after a while, what happens is that that curve flattens off. Now what that means is that the longer that we let a reaction go, it doesn't stay linear forever. And the reason it doesn't stay linear forever, because remember, enzymes catalyze reversible reactions. So the more we let product accumulate, the more likely product will start being converted back into substrate. Well, that's not what we're interested in studying. We want to study how fast the enzyme makes product. So if we're going to study an enzymatic reaction, we have to study what's called initial velocity. We don't want to wait too long in order to study the concentration of product. Because if we wait too long, we're actually starting to study the reverse reaction. And that's not what we're after. So that's why we use VO, or the initial velocity, in our measurements. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.